Yo, what's up, man? It's Khalid Salam. I'm back with another episode of the Peace Seekers podcast. Uh, and in this episode, the topic of today is going to be the detrimental factors of comparison. And for those of you who don't know what I mean by that, what I mean is there, there are pros and cons to comparing, to comparing your suffering and the things you're going through in life to that of others. The benefits can be that it humbles you, right? It can make you realize that what you're going through is not really as bad as you may feel it is in the moment, you know, because there are starving children in other countries. There are other countries where the people are enslaved. There are other countries where people are, uh, where pe- people have, have it a lot worse than we do in other areas. But a lot of times, this could be, in a sense, a method of reverse psychology that we use against ourselves for people who are depressed and people who are going through anxiety because we use this oftentimes not as a method to humble ourselves, but we use it as a cop out. We use it as a method to cop out of what we're actually going through because we know that on the other side of acknowledging that we are messed up from certain trials or traumatic experiences on the other side of that on the other side of that accountability is is what i like to call real work that has to be done and we know that we're the only ones who can do that work we know that we can't put that work on someone else we have to own that and for people who are depressed and people who are going through anxiety a lot of our decision making is made based out of fear, based out of fear. And that fear, a lot of times, uh, a lot of times that fear is actually having to do things, actually actually having to do the work that is needed to be done in order to overcome depression and anxiety. So whereas I could say, yes, there are people in other countries who have it way worse than I have it here. I can say that to humble myself now being someone who's overcome depression and anxiety. When I'm, for example, right now in the month of Ramadan, I'm fasting. I'm a Muslim. I fast. And I can complain about how hard it is. But to say, well, there are actually starving children in in places like Yemen who are fasting unintentionally in in many cases there there are people who are all over the world who are fasting because they don't have the luxury of eating i can say that to humble myself and make it through not breaking my fast during ramadan but for people who are depressed and going through anxiety they don't say it to humble themselves a lot of times they say it so that they don't have to acknowledge that there are things they have been through that has really messed them up Because you know to say that, to say I've been through things that have really messed me up, means that I now have to do something to get out of being messed up. So a lot of times we don't use that as a humbling tool. We use that as a tool to put a cover over whatever it is that we're going through. To neglect the fact that there's a change that needs to be made. And because of depression and anxiety having a lot to do with fear, that fear is what drives us to use those excuses so that we don't actually have to open up that door. As long as you can keep that door closed, it's as though those things don't exist. But the thing about depression and anxiety when it comes to trials and trauma is that even with the door closed, you still hear that knock on the other side. So even though the door is closed, you know, something's on the other side of it and you know, on the other side of it, it's a lot of trauma. It's a lot of pain. It's a lot of hurt. But if you, if you say and do things, to cover that trauma and to cover that hurt it's it's almost as though it doesn't exist but it exists 
you know it's, it's almost as if it, it if if it doesn't exist but it does exist and that's the reason why i feel that a lot of people prolong depression and anxiety when if you just open the door now you can see okay well i went through this that this that and the third i went through that when i was that age i went through that when i was this age um yesterday this person did this i went through a breakup i went through uh, uh, uh problems with my parents problems with my family i went through this that and the third when you can open up the door and acknowledge that like everyone else we go through trauma we go through pain we go through suffering we go through trials you can actually put a plan in place to overcome those things but until you open the door all you're doing is prolonging it all you're doing is prolonging it so um i think like i said you know there are detrimental factors of comparisons there are pros and cons there are good things that can come out of it and there are bad things that can come out of it and and i think you'll find that with most things in the world uh it really comes down to mindset and just how i pointed out someone who has overcome depression and anxiety can look at that and it humbles them but the person who's actually still going through depression and anxiety looks at it as a, a way to escape you know which is something we're constantly searching for as depressed people as people who are dealing with anxiety as a way to escape and not realizing that the only escape is through real work that's the only way to escape it. The only way to escape depression and anxiety is to really take accountability for the way that you feel without placing the blame on anyone else. Um, and accepting the things you have gone through and accepting that in order to feel better, to be better, to live better. You have to do the work. And, and that's what a lot of people fear. That's why people use that as as an excuse they use it as a cop out you know and i was one of those people so i know you know it's not it's not easy you know it's not easy but it's not as hard as you as your mind makes you believe it is either so uh so with that being said um stop comparing yourself to other people stop comparing yourself to others uh stop trying to patronize people because that's that's what we do we try to patronize people. Oh, well, you know, you went through this, that, and the third, and I only went through this, so your life's way worse, man. I'm sorry for that. No, no. You need to stop feeling sorry for yourself and really stop feeling sorry for others in this moment as well and take your life by, by the horns, so to speak, and really come up with a real plan to overcome what you're going through because nobody else is going to do it for you. Nobody else is going to do that for you. And it doesn't matter how much you try to compare yourself to others or how much you say, well, they're going through something worse. You are going through things, too. And that is OK. It's OK to go through things. It's OK to to deal with pain, to deal with suffering, to deal with trials, to deal with trauma. That's OK, because that is the life of being a human being. It's okay to feel. It's okay to cry. It's okay to be down. And there's no way around that because that is the nature of who you are as a human being, as a person. That's in your nature to feel. So for now, I'm not saying forever, just for now. Stop comparing yourself to others and really open the door and see what's on the other side of you. With that being said, I'm Kali Salam. It's been a while since we did an episode on the Peace Seekers podcast, man. I've been slacking, but you know, I had to, I had to get back to it. But um, PeaceSeekersBrand.com. You know, as you can see, the merch. Peace Seekers, Peace Over Depression hoodies now, forty nine ninety nine. They're on sale. Uh, Peace Seekers joggers. I will. Tees, the overcome tees, the peace seekers, uh, peace over depression tees. You can find everything on peaceseekersbrand.com. 10% of all purchases go to help fight the stigma surrounding mental health and anxiety. Um, and as always, 
I'll link below the phone number, the contact information to the suicide prevention hotline um, for those in need. And uh, yeah, um, that being said, man, to sum this to sum this up quickly before we go, it's just. In order for you to overcome depression and anxiety, it takes real work. And I'm not going to lie to you and say that it's easy. But I will be straightforward and say that it is it is attainable. And uh, the only thing that will stop you from overcoming it is if you stop doing the work or if you never begin for that matter. Um, But if you do it and you don't stop. You'll win every time, every single time you'll win, you know, Um, but you can't allow yourself to be sidetracked by the lives of others and by the things that other people are going through. Um, At least not for now. You have to focus in on you and uh, really put the work in to overcome it. So that being said, man, it's Kali Salam. All my 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 social media platforms will be below and. uh, like I said, man, PeaceSeekersBrand.com. Let's let's get these donations going so we can so we can help the people, man. You know, it, we're all in this together. So I appreciate everybody for listening. And uh I'll catch you on the next one, man. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ramadan Mubarak. <laughs>